Hello there. This is Karen Bondar. It is Saturday, February 17th. And I wanted to make a quick video today because I've been getting some questions about the allyship course that I am currently taking. You know, one of the mandates of this course is actually for people taking it to help spread the word of um, what allyship really is and means and how we can, as white folks, be better at forwarding the work of reconciliation. The course itself is meant to educate us, the white people, for lack of a better term, as, as yes, a means by which we can then pass on this information, be stewards of good information, seek to be good allies, but also a very pragmatic application of this and something that maybe actually didn't come to my mind before it was told to me in this course is that Indigenous leaders, Indigenous elders, knowledge keepers are heavily ensconced in work in their own communities, work that embodies reconciliation in some respects, but in many respects it is raw healing and, you know, way dealing with the impacts and aftermath of the residential school system, 60 scoop, um, and essentially racist policies in Canada. And so our Indigenous colleagues are busy. <laughs> and so how about we create a course, or not we, but um, Dr. Keith Carlson um, and Dr. Dave Sheppy at UFV have been instrumental along with many other folks um, in getting this course set up so that we can take care of perhaps doing some of that work behind the scenes that we need to do and freeing up the time and space for Indigenous elders, um, politicians, and knowledge keepers to be doing their work of healing and reconciliation and of culture. Allyship in this regard, the, you know, the, the course itself giving us tools to move this work forward. It's important for our, for us to let our egos be gone um, in the sense that, yeah, we are the white folks here now, and this is work, this is these are huge injustices that happened in the past and they did take place by white folks primarily against indigenous folks. That doesn't make it my fault in particular, but I have to get out of my own way in terms of, you know, how is, how is taking up space with those kind of thoughts interfering with my ability to, to simply just help and do good work that I think most Canadians really want to do. Those difficult conversations, let's have them this this work of kind of discomfort as maybe many of us who are trying or you know sometimes we're trying too hard or you know but being being safe and being okay with getting it wrong and being told how to do better um, by our indigenous colleagues by our white friends and, and family is this is a great big huge learning process and and I guess in in true to form indigenous spirit it's important for us to be okay with one another and to embody a spirit of acceptance whilst actively educating ourselves about what we can do to, to do better. You know, I, I want to be considered an ally. I want to be considered an ally for LGBTQ um, trans rights. I want to be considered an ally for, you know, things that that matter in the world to me, uh, including, you know, those rights I just mentioned, um, environmental rights, and certainly and foremost to me and in, in Canada, rights of Indigenous peoples. And so I think of myself, therefore, as an ally, as someone who, uh, well, isn't Indigenous um, and who tries to not pollute the environment as much as I can, recognizing I'm in an imperfect system as well, uh, and that I'm an imperfect person as well. An ally indicating my role in supporting those who are. And it is, it is no longer, I guess, or it shouldn't have ever been okay for people like me to proclaim ourselves as allies, only to sit back and do nothing and say nothing about injustices that are happening. And that's, uh, yeah, that just isn't really a, a way of moving any kind of work forward. Um, and so in that sense, allyship is something that you are continuously learning 
in order to become, um, that you are continuously sort of proving yourself as an ally. I, um, I can never become complacent in my status as an ally because I, it is something that, that I no longer have the ability to call myself unless I am actively practicing it. And to that end, um, Dr. Keith Carlson, who is one of the main instructors or the main instructor of this class, he provided some, some ways, some very basic ways that we can start thinking about how to be a little more active in our role in reconciliation. So turn our sympathy instead into empathy. Sympathy doesn't help you get anywhere. Certainly having sympathy for someone or something that is tragic is, is um, somewhat innate of us to experience. However, empathy and actively moving yourself and guiding yourself towards having an empathic uh, POV is something that will get you out of simply feeling sorry. I mean, that doesn't really help in any pragmatic way. Take your complacency and elevate that to a place of continuous learning, whether that is online learning, whether that is learning through conversation in person, wherever it is that you see and meet people, um, whatever that means for you. Understand that if you are complacent, in your practice, you are not serving as a good ally. Assumptions and replace them with an open-mindedness. I don't know if I could say it enough times how disappointing it seems to me that most of what is wrong with the world is, is really at the very root of things because people are not okay with each other. And I how can one put that any differently? Being okay with each other, being open to who a different person is and what they want to believe and how they want to live their life. It seems to me like that could be the simplest thing we could all do. And, and we'll actually, lo and behold, you know, being open is a core principle of many indigenous cultures. And many of us, you know, gringos, white people come to the table with a set of assumptions, whether that is framed by uh, a religious practice, Christianity, uh, any number of religions in the Christianity family, whether it comes from an educational institution, and you just sort of have this hierarchical view in your mind of, you know, this, this one person at the top of the school, and then, you know, blah, 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 the layers below. What basic assumptions do you bring to the world? A um, big eye opener, I mean, um, to consider what your assumptions are um, and then to maybe challenge yourself. Don't just don't just think, OK, those are the things that I as assume in this world. Challenge yourself to be open instead. Taking basic self-awareness up a notch to self-reflectivity. So sure, it, it's important to be aware of who you are in the world and what your place is, what your value is, what your values are, what you stand for. Those things are all, well, I think central to being human. The level of self-reflectiveness is, is, I think, so key because if we actually consider our own actions in the context of the actions of our community, our province, our country, our gender, our profession, I mean, whatever frame of reference you, you may be using. I mean, being self-reflective, again, it's that ego piece, getting out of your own way, being able to really consider your own actions in the context of not just your knowledge system, not just who you are in your white identity or whatever your identity is. Challenge yourself to be a little more reflective. And then I'll end up, oh no, there's two more, there's two more. And this one's a big one. Um, predisposition to speak. I mean, oh my goodness. And this is a big, I, I certainly, I won't spend too much time on this one, but honestly, I, white people and certainly white, well, I'm going to say it, white men uh, tend to have a predisposition to speak and to feel as though the things they want to say should be heard by those in the room. And I mean, I'm guilty of it. No one's not guilty of it, I suppose. But let's remember to zip it. I mean, it's very, very clear. Let's stop talking. Let's just stop talking as I'm making a video about talking. Yeah, that's irony. Um, but let's listen. If there's an Indigenous person in the room that has not had a chance to speak, 
zip it. And even, you know what I mean? Like, I just, just zip it. We got to zip it. We don't know the best way. Don't assume you know the best way. Just stop that assumption. And then lastly, a big one, taking your inaction, your inaction on whatever it is that that is the thing that's sitting for you, that's bugging you, that you're not active on it. Challenge yourself to take your inaction to action. Lots of ways we can as Canadians and as Canadians, yeah, just good people who, who most of us really are. Uh, we can We can help to forward the work of reconciliation by understanding that our worldview is but one, but one. There's, there's so many others and indigenous peoples were here in this landscape far, far before, uh, you know, the Columbus and da, 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 da. we must understand that. And I guess maybe for me, one of the reasons why it resonates so greatly is because I'm a biologist and I, I've always just grown up with just this obsession with nature and the outdoors and, and the beauty of these systems and indigenous existence is part of that. And so that makes so much sense to me that that should be central to our existence as homo sapiens. Woo, okay, that was a really long video. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was, that was some thoughts from our first uh, week. I will aim as part of my commitment in this course to share um, a lot of these really important principles uh, as I learn them. Thank you.